y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four. And today we're talking about a very heavy topic. This is a topic that I probably should have covered a long time ago. And I'm personally a little bit sad that it took what's going on currently for me to cover this, but it is important. Clearly there are many people who do not understand it. So today we are talking about consent. I want to be clear, I am not turning into a YouTube drama channel. I don't think that the David Dobrik vlog squad dom allegations are drama. These are very serious accusations and they are important to discuss from a humanistic level, not as YouTube drama. If you are not familiar with the current accusations towards David Dobrik, the vlog squad, Dom, Jason Nash, other people associated with this group. I think Philip DeFranco did a really good job of kind of breaking down the timeline in one of his recent videos, and I will link that down below. That's not why I'm here. I wanna go over the more consent-oriented education aspect of this. To kind of give a basic overview so that it is understood what we are talking about, basically David Dobrik has a group of people that are called the Vlog Squad. They create vlog content for YouTube together, and he is essentially the producer, the creator of this vlog. So the accusations against David Dobrik in particular right now are that he, maybe he is creating a toxic work environment or friendship environment where people are exposed to things or agree to things or coerced into things that they would not otherwise agree to if not for a very distinct power imbalance that is happening within that group with David being the leader. On a little bit deeper level than that, Seth, a former member of the vlog squad, has accused Jason Nash of assaulting him and that was coordinated or put together as a prank by David Dobrik. He is saying that he did not give his consent for this prank. I'm not going to go into detail about what it is because again, that is not why I'm here, but I just think that we need a basic overview of what is happening for people who don't know so that we can talk about this. And then on an even more deep level, there are accusations against a person named Dom who is also a former member of the vlog squad that he actually a young woman who essentially was coerced using alcohol and power dynamics to be in a situation that she could not consent to. I think the first thing we need to jump into, because I've been reading these comments just because I wanted to kind of get a feel. The takeaway that I'm seeing in a lot of places, although overwhelmingly people are standing with the victims, there's a lot of chatter about why is David included? He didn't perform these acts that are being you know, accused upon these people. And I think it's really important to note here that if someone is an organizer of an event that would not otherwise have presented the opportunity for this to happen, they may, in some situations, have liability for what happened. So for instance, he's creating this vlog, he needs content for this vlog, and these people are working with him. They are gaining something from being around him. You would be really short-sighted to say that none of these people are gaining something from being around David. It's not just a friendship setup. I mean, this is clearly a, maybe not like written contractual agreement, but there is certainly an exchange of services and benefit, whether it be clout or gaining followers on the internet or what have you. So this is a work environment that he has created. That means he is in charge and is in a position of power over these people. When he coordinates these things, and encourages them to happen, he is by default involved in the situation. He certainly should be held accountable for creating the environment in which those crimes were basically encouraged to take place. Consent as a basic definition is agreement to do something or permission for something to happen. In day-to-day -day life, it should be very easy to tell if the person sitting in front of you has consented to what is happening. It's not a gray line. It is very defined. Find. And if there's any question of if consent has been obtained, it hasn't. It's as simple as that. But if you want to dive deeper into really what is consent made up of, I really like this mnemonic that Planned Parenthood puts out called FRIES. And to break it down into what each of these means, the F is for freely given. This means consent doesn't involve any type of manipulation, force, both partners, or all partners have the ability to say yes or no at any time. And specifically, no significant power imbalance. This is why it is socially and ethically unacceptable for me as a physician to seduce one of my patients. This is why you can't, you know, I don't know, have sex with your boss because there's a power dynamic there that is inappropriate. And this applies to 
what we're seeing with the David Dobrik situation. He's created environments with power dynamics, both of him to the people who work with him, his friends, the vlog squad, and with the vlog squad to the people who want to be around them or their fans. And so this is inherently problematic to begin with, with the type of content that's being created there. The R is for reversible. This means consent can be withdrawn at any time. Even in the middle of a sex act, someone can change their mind. This is incredibly important as well. People are often coerced or guilted into finishing when they suddenly become uncomfortable. And that is not consent. That is coercion. It needs to be informed. This means both partners need to be aware of what is happening. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory, but you can't consent to something if you don't know what it is. Enthusiastic. Consent must be enthusiastic. Both partners must be fully on board with what is happening. And anytime that someone becomes uncomfortable or not excited about what is happening, you stop. That means consent has been withdrawn. And that can be with words, that can be with body language, that can be with actions. It doesn't matter. If someone has become uncomfortable with the situation, that means consent has been removed. It doesn't have to be a situation where you say, I don't consent anymore. You can just be uncomfortable and removing yourself. And as a partner, it is expected that you will recognize that. Of course, it would be better if everybody could just say, I don't consent to this anymore. But that's not always possible. People don't always feel capable of doing that, especially in situations like we're discussing here where there's a significant power imbalance and a dynamic that is complex and probably unethical to begin with. And then finally, consent must be specific. You can't give consent for oral sex and then assume that that means consent for vaginal intercourse. You can't give consent for a kiss and assume that that means consent for groping. All of these things are super important and specifically different events and they must all be specifically consented for. All of these points, when you go through them point by point, are brought up in all of these accusations and I think when looking at this, under the guise of what the aspects of consent are, it's a lot easier to understand why these two people making these accusations are saying, I did not consent. Of course, you have members of the vlog squad who are saying that that's not what happened or that there was consent, but I think it's important to know that the rates of false accusations for sexual assault and rape are very low. They're estimated to be two to 10% at the highest. And the incidence of sexual assault and rape is extremely high. One in six women, according to rain.org, will be sexually assaulted or raped in their lifetime. And 400,000 people per year are affected by sexual assault or rape. And that is likely highly, highly underreported and thus underrepresented. So this is super common and it's very uncommon to have false allegations. I'm not saying that any of these people are guilty and that's not what I'm here for, but I did notice in all the comment sections of these videos that people didn't understand what consent was. You can't give consent if you are under the influence of alcohol. If you can't drive or make decisions, rational decisions, then you can't consent. If you can't be in the headspace to understand potential ramifications of whatever is happening, then you are not able to consent. If consent initially was not given, and then potentially somebody was given alcohol, even if they consented after that, that's not consent, that is coercion. This person was coerced into consenting. You don't have someone say, no, I don't wanna have sex, and then they loosen up with alcohol and consent. That is coercion and it is not consent. Both parties need to feel safe. There should never be a situation where someone is not consenting to something that you would like to happen and you convince them to do that. That is just simply not okay and that is a crime. So please, please, please take these to heart and really understand them. I think a very good example, there's obviously the great tea video that was made um, and I can link that in the video or in the description box below as well. But another way to think about this is getting your hair cut. You don't get coerced into getting your hair cut. Nobody goes out on the street and drags you into a salon and encourages you to come get your hair cut that day. You decide I'm gonna get my hair cut and you go in and you ask for a haircut and then the person says, yes or no, I can cut your hair. And then if you get there and you're sitting in the chair and you decide, oh my gosh, no, I don't want to cut my hair anymore. Even if they've already started, you can get up at any time and leave on your own will. That is consent. Consent 
as far as getting your haircut is informed. You are told what they are going to do while you are there. They don't just start chopping away. You are a part of the decision decision-making process. The consent required is also very specific. You don't go in and ask for a trim and leave with a blue spike cut that's super short. That would not be okay. You didn't consent to that. Of course, if you change your mind in the middle and decide that's what you want and you tell the person cutting your hair that that's what you want, then that would be consent. But it's not consent if they just do that and they didn't make sure that that's okay with you first. I, I don't understand why it's so difficult for people to understand this in regards to sex and relationships, but it's so easy for people to understand this in regards to haircuts and serving people food. It's important that we start recognizing that one, it is very uncommon for people to be falsely accused of sexual assault and rape. And two, that consent is not a gray zone. If there's any question about if consent was obtained, it wasn't. And then also I think this brings up a really important discussion. That basically the Me Too of YouTube and power dynamics in this world. If you are a famous YouTuber, or even if you're not a famous YouTuber and you just have somewhat of a following, it is unethical for you to have a relationship with a fan. That's a power imbalance. That person is going to be naturally less able to make decisions on their own will because they are in a situation of imbalanced power. This is really, really important. Again, I wasn't sure how to do this because I wanted to talk about consent and I wanted to circle it back to the events that are going on right now because that was really kind of what sparked me into wanting to make this right now. I, I hope that these victims get justice and consent is a really important part of sexual relationships. If you're not mature enough to figure out how to appropriately achieve consent from your partner without coercion or power imbalances, etc., then you are not mature enough to be having sex. This is very, very important. So thank you for listening today. I'm sorry this is a little bit of a different video and probably going out on a different day, but I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was important. So stand with victims, listen to victims. Thank you for being here. I'll see you on Monday.